Thanks to KCA for inviting me to speak at IKCS 2020 this year. Uh, the title of my talk is Chromatin Dysregulation and CCRCC. My name is Laura Banashinsky. I am an assistant professor at UT Southwestern Medical Center. I am a basic scientist and a chromatin biologist by training, and I think you'll see um, in the next few slides why my lab has become interested in uh, kidney cancer and specifically CCRCC. Um, so as you're all aware, um, kidney cancer is a progressive disease. The first hit is typically a loss of heterozygosity of chromosome 3P. This loss of heterozygosity um, leaves a patient susceptible to additional mutations in tumor suppressors that lie within this particular region of, of 3P. This eventually leads to kidney cancer initiation, progression, and diagnosis. Um, so, you know, over the last 10, 15 years, we now, have, through exome sequencing, have um, exquisite views of the kinds of mutations that drive um, particular kinds of cancers. And so here I'm uh, showing you this list of genes compiled by Jim Brugerolis, where he looks at the top 10 most uh, frequently mutated genes in, in kidney cancer. And what immediately struck me when I looked at this particular list of genes is that five out of 10 of these genes, half of these genes, are chromatin-associated proteins. And so, of course, kidney cancer is a disease of metabolism, but I would argue here that uh, kidney cancer is also uh, a disease of chromatin dysregulation. So, you know, what do all of these, these factors do? Um, they're involved in polychrome-mediated gene repression, um, they're involved in nucleosome remodeling, chromatin remodeling complexes, and transcription. And the protein that we're going to focus on today is a protein called SETD2. Um, SETD2 is a histone methyltransferase. It is associated with RNA polymerase. And what SETD2 does is it takes uh, SAM as a cofactor and it transfers the methyl group from SAM onto histone proteins. And SETD2 does this at a particular location on the histone tail. It does this at um, lysine 36, and it results in trimethylation. And so here, I'm going to refer to this as H3K36 trimethylation. Um, this activity is commonly associated with gene activation. You find this in, in active gene bodies. Um, and SETD2 itself has also been associated with DNA repair. Um, so we started looking at the kinds of SETD2 mutations that are present in kidney cancer, and here there were a couple things that really struck us. One is that many of these um, uh, mutations are missense mutations in the SET domain. This is the particular part of the protein that's responsible for transferring that methyl group from SAM to histone proteins. Um, and this makes sense if that enzymatic activity is important for the cell. The other thing that we noticed is that many of these mutations are uh, result in early truncation of the protein and they exist along the length of SETD2. And so here, um, you know, our initial question that we really set out to address with this project is, are these mutations the same? Is loss of the enzymatic activity of the protein the same as losing the protein itself? Uh, to try to address this question, we turn to some um, available kidney cancer cell lines um, that have varying SETD2 mutation status. And so here we have two cell lines that are, are wild type for SETD2. This top one is 7860, um, this one is ECHN, and then we had two cell lines that carry SETD2 mutation. Uh, one of these cell lines, A498, carries um, a, a late truncation in SETD2 that results in loss of catalytic activity in the context of nearly full-length protein. Um, the other mutation, the other cell line is the A704 cell line, and this contains an early truncation that is a putative loss of function or loss of SETD2 protein. We then uh, validated uh, this, this, um, these observations by Western blot here. I'm showing you that indeed this early truncation cell line does not, uh, does not carry SETD2. And further, that both the catalytic dead and the early truncation cell lines result in reduced activity of SETD2, and that uh, manifests as reduced H3K36 trimethylation. So after we saw this, we turned to uh, genomics. We like to try to assess um, the activity of these enzymes genome-wide, and for that we use ChIP-seq. And here I'm showing you a really, really zoomed out view of the genome. I'm showing you the whole genome. And I'm showing you K36 trimethylation. And so here you can see in these wild type cells that there's lots of K36 trimethylation on the genome. 
And here in our catalytic dead, we've got virtually no K36 trimethylation now. But the big surprise to us was that in this early truncation cell line, we still have quite a bit of signal. If we zoom in, um, we can see um, here in the wild type setting that the signal really is associated with genes. These are the genes down here. But now what you see in this early truncation cell line is that this K36 trimethylation has moved away from these genes and towards these energetic regions. And so in my lab, what we call this is H3K36 trimethyl redistribution or intergenic redistribution. Um, so the first question that we wanted to try to answer was whether or not we could rescue this effect. If we can express a catalytically active SETD2 in these cells, can we restore H3K36 trimethylation to, um, to genes? And so here I'm showing you a, a Western blot showing that we have our early truncation cell line where we express SETD2 or not. And you can see that the SETD2 expressing cells have very high levels of H3K36 trimethylation. Now, instead of showing you a sequencing experiment, I'm just going to show you some CHIP QCR, QPCR where we just ask what the Q36 enrichment levels are like at a few particular regions. And so here, um, this is that same result that I showed you before. In our early truncation cell line, we have a loss of H3K36 trimethylation at genes. We have an increase in K36 trimethylation at these intergenic regions. And what you can see quite nicely is that when we add back um, catalytically active set D2 to these cells, we have an increase in trimethylation now at the genes and a decrease in trimethylation at the intergenic regions. So by re-expressing a full length active set D2, we're able to restore the normal pattern of K36 trimethylation observed in these, in, in these cells. Okay, so this was a really um, you know, interesting observation for us because uh, of, of this, um, this, this, this thing that the Comiton field knows. So we know that SETD2 is the only histone methyltransferase that can put K36 trimethylation onto genes. Um, and so it was really striking to us that in its absence that we were still seeing the signal just redistributed. Um, so the other thing that we know, though, is that this is a quite, uh, there, there are other proteins that are able to install lower orders of K36 trimethylation. Um, this set of, I think, what's five, six proteins is able to write H3K36 mono and dimethylation into, into, into chromatin. It's usually just unable to convert to tri, so D2 is required for that. And so our hypothesis here was that um, by losing set D2, somehow one of these other proteins is able to function unconventionally. And so to test this idea, we used um, another tool that cancer biology has given us, and that's um, this particular mutant of a histone where this lysine has been substituted by a methionine. And generally, when these lysines that are methylated are substituted by methionines, these act as um, pan methyltransferase inhibitors for this particular lysine. So by expressing H3K36M in these cells, we inhibit all methyltransferases that would write methylation onto this lysine. And so what we did was we expressed this particular mutant into our early truncation cell line. And I really want to focus your attention over here on these intergenic regions. And so what you can see, this is just a control. This is a, essentially a wild type protein that we express in the cells. And now here we have our pan methyltransferase inhibitor. And I think what you can see quite, quite, quite clearly is that by expressing this methyltransferase inhibitor, uh, we have this reduction of K36 trimethylation at these intergenic regions. And so here, you know, we're, we're really, um, this, this project is kind of in, in early days, early stages. And, um, you know, we're trying to figure out what the methyltransferase is, why, why it's functioning unconventionally or aberrantly in the absence of SETD2, what the normal relationship is between that protein and SETD2. I mean, we're really trying to work out the molecular details behind this observation. Um, but one of the things that we wanted to try to answer is, you know, why, why is this important in, in the tumor and the cancer? And so um, to ask the question of, of whether SETD2, you know, what's the functional importance, we just turn to a transcriptomic analysis where we take our early truncation cell lines and we compare those now to our cell lines, our early truncation cell lines that express full length set D2. 
And so you can see that, um, you know, all of these genes over here are upregulated when we re-express um, SETD2 in these cells. And if we look at ontology terms for these genes that are upregulated, we see a number of terms that are associated with cell division, you know, mitotic nuclear division, cell division, cell, cell cycle phase, and so on. And here I just want to draw attention to a really nice study from Cheryl Walker's lab published a few years ago where she shows that not only is SETD2 a methyltransferase for histone proteins, but it also can methylate tubulin and so perhaps play a role in cell cycle progression there. Okay, so you know we have this observation here, this, this transcriptomic analysis that suggests that these cells might be dividing more rapidly, and so we wanted to know if this was true. And so we just did a very simple uh, experiment where we just take our cells that are um, our early truncation cells or our cells that express SETD2 and we count, we count them over time. And I think what you can see clearly here is that these cells that are expressing SETD2 are growing faster than those that don't. And this is kind of a, you know, an interesting observation because SETD2 is thought to be a tumor suppressor. And here we have this observation that is actually increasing the cell growth. And so we wondered if there were other aspects of tumor biology that might be affected by the presence or absence of SETD2. And here um, we wanted to ask about the ability of these cells to migrate. And so here we use this wound healing assay. And I think, um, I hope what you can appreciate here is that these cells that do not express SETD2 are able to um, heal this wound. Uh, better than cells that are expressing SETD2. And so maybe um, this is linked to this observation that SETD2 mutations are often late in kidney cancer and could be associated with um, migration and metastasis. Um, okay, so you know we have this molecular observation um, that we've got these um, differences in, in chromatin dysregulation based on the type of SETD2 mutation. And so based on this, what we wondered is whether or not these cells would show different, um, you know, sensitivities or synthetic lethalities. And so to try to um, understand whether these CCRCC cell lines might show um, unique synthetic lethalities, we turned to a PRISM approach where we barcoded our cell lines and pooled them. We can treat them with a panel of drugs and then we can um, sequence these cells and we can ask which of these cells survive drug treatment, which of them don't. Um, and so um, when we did our initial screen, um, we've, we've, we've just done this, this one initial screen at this point. And um, you know, our initial observations are that the, the location of SETD2 mutation is, is important or it results in differential chromatin dysfunction. And so what we did was we took an available, um, very small library of compounds that target chromatin associated proteins. This is lysine methyltransferases, arginine methyltransferases, um, uh, acetylases, deacetylases, and so on. And we asked whether or not our cell lines would show differential sensitivity to these compounds. And so here, this is a really preliminary result and I, I don't uh, I'll just focus your attention on a few things. So here, again, these are our wild type cells, catalytic dead, early truncation. If the box is red, that means that the cells survived better on treatment compared to their cohort. If the box is blue, it means that the, the cells were sensitive. And so here, just a couple of very, very early preliminary observations. Um, these early truncations can uh, carry more synthetic lethalities, it seems, than this missense mutation or, or catalytic dead. And some that might be of particular interest for us to follow would be um, this polychrome dysfunction or perhaps enhancer dysfunction. Okay, so I just want to uh, conclude here. Uh, what we have observed is that the type of SETD2 mutation um, in the CCRC cell, C cell lines results in differential chromatin dysfunction. When we have wild type SETD2, we see H3K36 trimethylation enrichment in genic regions. In the catalytic dead, this makes sense, it's completely absent, but instead in the null, instead of the signal being absent, what we're seeing is this redistribution away from genes um, towards intergenic regions. And we're really trying to understand, you know, all of the molecular mechanisms behind this and whether or not this is important for kidney cancer progression. But, um, you know, if it is, one of the implications of this work may be that tumors that carry different SETD2 mutations may show unique synthetic lethalities. 
Um, so with that, I want to end by acknowledging the people who did the work. This was completed or this work is ongoing and um, uh, carried out by Haitao Mao, a postdoc in the lab. Ashwaya is doing the computational analysis and Shelpa Dar uh, is a graduate student working on this project. Um, this work has been funded very generously by UT Southwestern and by the DOD KCRP. Um, and I want to thank Jim Bergerlis and um, Pyle Kapoor specifically as, uh, um, for all of their help with uh, reagents and um, time and, and expertise. And thank you for your attention.